rest in Port Elizabeth earlier today. His funeral was held at Nangoza Jebe Hall in New Brighton in the Eastern Cape. The 76-year-old legend has been buried at Heroes Acre at the Zwede Cemetery. <laughs> As a family, we declare unequivocally that Bonzola's life was well lived and must be cherished to live on forever. Described by many as a warm-hearted, selfless individual who gave back to the community and empowered many, he put his hometown on the map and encouraged locals to travel and develop their talents. I can't say enough about Winston Njona. Njona, goodbye. You've worked hard. The young that you see here, they are examples of his hard work here in New Brighton. Minister of Arts and Culture paid his respects to the drama and film industry legend, saying his name will go down in the history of South Africa. If we're Porti, SABC News, Port Elizabeth. Our reporter Eviwe Party attended the funeral and joins us now from Port Elizabeth. Eviwe, it's been a very long day. It's been a momentous occasion. What was your feeling and the sense that you got on the ground at the funeral? Definitely, Adriana, it was a very emotional and uh, a heart aching day as well. But, you know, in a mood to celebrate an iconic life, uh, a man who actually lived as a hero and a mentor for many, specifically here when you speak about Port Elizabeth and uh, New Brighton. You'll remember that New Brighton is one of the oldest townships that we have here in Port Elizabeth. It's known to be a township of jazz, arts, um, and, you know, just to have a, a, a lively theme and to think that someone like Utada Winston Chona could have relocated for greener pastures like many who are in the arts field he could have left Port Elizabeth for Johannesburg but he decided to come back home and I think that's one of the most important things that came out for me at the memorial service and as well as the funeral in terms of this was a man who actually decided to dedicate his life to the people of his hometown he put Port Elizabeth on the map and he worked very hard to put his mentees on the map as well. Um, when uh, Uma Mongonyeni spoke, she alluded to the fact that the money that they worked for is the same um, money that they used to uh, move people internationally to Joburg to help them get proper schooling when it comes to uh, the arts and the art schooling and theatre and drama and music. So he did a lot for his community and even during the week at uh, the memorial service, there was a, a gentleman we spoke to whom now is a director and he was saying what was amazing about Ntatunjona was that he had an open door policy and apart from that even though they weren't able to gain funding or access funding at all times he used to use his own fuel to transport people around to make sure that they were you know at theater they were at practices and that they were doing the best that they could so I think most importantly was that we've learned um, obviously of a theater giant but to take home is a selfless man who never stopped giving to his community who still continued to have an open door policy uh, and his whole family actually we can thank his whole family for his life who opened their homes to many of uh, the aspiring artists here from Port Elizabeth and the Eastern Cape as a whole. Now you've mentioned the immeasurable contribution he's made to the South African entertainment industry. He's helped boost the careers of Selomake Kanguba, Owen Sekaje and Tembi Mshali. Was there any eulogy that stood out for you that made memorable moments for you? I think, Adriana, more than anything, it had to be the eulogy that came from Uta Dauzola Yeye. Uh, you'll remember, obviously, he's not part of the arts uh, faculty, but um, 
what we didn't know about that Winston Journal, or which isn't, uh, you know, to the public knowledge a lot as in comparison to uh, the enormous amount that he has given to uh, the arts industry, uh, drama and theatre, is that he was also a sportsman. Um, in Port Elizabeth, he's known to have been a great tennis player and a rugby player. Uh, he played rugby for the Spring Rose Rugby Union, which is one of the oldest rugby unions we have as well here in the Eastern Cape. And that was all broke down, very emotional. Um, but in celebrating a life where he said, I think what I take home with me the most is that he said, this was a man who was so humble at all times, but he looked at every situation in terms of even the sports players. If someone came from a broken home, he tried to be that person that would mend it for him. If someone didn't have a father, he would allocate himself to be that father. Uh, at all times, he attended everything he could in his community, and not as Uta Winston Jona, as a great giant of the theatre, but as a regular man who just wanted to support his community. And I think for me, the fact that he was a father to so many people, uh, the likes of Uta Zolaye as well, um, he wasn't just a mentor, but he was someone that people could relate to on a personal level as well. I think it was very emotional even in the opening. Um, there was one of the ladies who actually sang and even through song she, break, she broke down and even at the memorial service majority of um, the pieces that we saw there, there was an art, there was a drama piece there was a lot of music, uh, there was a choir and all of these people were saying that this is a man who touched our lives and this is a man that we still want to see in the next life and we'll continue with his legacy uh, and we'll continue you know, to pass the baton on to uh, those people who are still upcoming in the industry as well. I believe that John Carney sent a video. He was unable to attend the funeral. Yes, uh, Dr. John Kani was unable to attend the funeral. I'm not sure if he's actually in the country, but he did send a very emotional uh, video that uh, people watched at uh, the funeral ceremony as well, where he said, you know, this was not only just a long time friend for him, but this was his brother. Um, they've spent so many memorable times together, and it was unfortunate that he was uh, unable to make it to come to the funeral, but his heart was with the family and with all those that were mourning such a great life. And he was mourning the death of his friend as well, um, which was very thoughtful. And uh, the video, you know, he was sitting in the backyard of his garden. It looked like it was raining a bit, which also, you know, kind of linked to the weather that we were experiencing in Port Elizabeth the, uh, this morning. It was raining about 100 percent from about six o'clock this morning up until about 12 o'clock. It's been raining the whole day. So even the weather went with the somber mood, but also in a celebratory mode. And uh, he was saying, you know, uh, we, we should celebrate his life and we should should let his legacy live on because his name will always be in the history books of South Africa in terms of uh, the role that he's played, not only in theatre, but also politically, you know, uh, educating and sensitizing a lot of people through in terms of what we experienced as South Africa under the apartheid regime. But he used theatre to do that. Mm. Definitely a momentous loss for South Africa and the entertainment industry, the political industry. As a whole. That was our reporter Eviwe Party in Port Elizabeth updating us on the funeral of legendary actor Winston Chona. Thank you, Eviwe.